Hello everybody, welcome to this video. I'm Sue Cook, homeopath of 27 years, and I'm today talking to John Twig, who is a homeopath, who has developed a really interesting way of prescribing and working with homeopathy. And as Tesla said, it's all about vibration and frequency. So over to you, John. Well, my idea started, uh, my curiosity started when I was at college and uh, I was never content with the explanation uh, that, that Dr. Harnman gave. So I wanted to know, I'm naturally a curious person, so I wanted to know how the, the planet worked, how the universe works, how does homeopathy work, how did everything work? And uh, one day I um, I awoke to a concept of just really accepting that all energies of this, um, within this planet, come from the sun. Uh, but it, you take that a step further, it actually comes from the rays of the sun. And so I had to then, at that, at that time, I was actually investigating um, gems and why why they worked as remedies and according to ayurvedic uh, principles the uh, the gems worked as remedies because gems were storehouses of um of solar frequencies the sun's rays and a lot of this work came by the um the uh, the, the teacher dr bhattacharya uh, in a book called gem therapy now so realizing that um i'll follow their explanation now a ruby if you like a ruby has a flaw it can't take in the red rays of the sun so it uh, apparently it takes in all the other now the ayurvedic route is that the ruby store is a storehouse of of the red part of the sun's rays but the scientific explanation is that is the ruby actually takes in all the other colors and can't take in red so it reflects red as with the other gems like for example um emerald emerald ca can't take in the uh, the green rays of the spectrum it takes in all the others but not green so it reflects gr green so in other words these these gems are, are they are flawed so they can they can only do uh, specific um, work, shall we say? So we now know that a, a gem, um, uh, an emerald, is green because it reflects green cosmic light, and that's an energy, and the uh, the light is energy. Uh, if you take that um, a step further, well, what is energy and what is light? And I ask many people. And the, the answer is always, well, light is it's, it's white or it's yellow. And uh, my studies show that light is neither white or yellow. It's actually, um, it's, in fact, it's not even colored in a way. Um, light has an energy. And, uh, and the planet is actually um, involved in this color system. Scientifically, it's understood that if we can see something, we uh, we can only see it because it's coloured because of the, de the design or the evolved um, state of our body. Uh, we can um, we take in light, and through a series of filters or cones or whatever they're called, um, we we can only see something if it's coloured. And I thought, hang on a minute, I can see remedies. As can anybody, I can see arnica. So I then. Um, deducted that arnica uh, therefore must have a colour vibration because everything that we see vibrates nothing is static at all everything vibrates and uh, so I realised that uh, the likes of arnica vibrated but it vibrated at a colour frequency in fact everything vibrates at electrical frequencies we are electrical beings so, and that is really what we're doing when we use a remedy, we're using a vibration. So trace that back to the color aspect. 
So if I see that, um, if I need a remedy, oh no, we'll skip that. We'll come over now to, to light itself. Um, and so understanding that light is a vibration and a frequency, we need to know how to, uh, how to find these frequencies. And uh, I realized through dowsing, using a pendulum, that you can actually detect the uh, the the colors that something is vi vibrating with or resonating with. So if you um, if you understand uh, the concept of color, you, you, if you look at, uh, for example, um, all light. Uh, any light, in fact, that um, if you view light through a prism, any light, for example, a torch light, you shine a torch through a prism, the other side of the prism, you'll find the component parts of that light. Well, um, <clears throat> it's my understanding that nature has a prism, rain. And if you shine sunlight through rain, rain being the prism, the natural prism, nature's prism, you'll find the component parts of um, sunlight. Hence, you'll see a rainbow. And uh, so therefore the rainbow is proof that, that sunlight actually um, has color frequencies because you can see the colors, uh, but the colors are not static, they vibrate on taking the principle that, that nothing is static at all, everything vibrates. So therefore, the rays of the sun must also vibrate. Uh, but you take that a step further, they vibrate at electrical frequency, frequencies. So everything seems to be about, um, about electromagnetism. So everything is magne magnetic, everything is electrical. And uh, therefore, it doesn't take much to uh, to conclude that the, our remedies are actually, um, they're all vibrating and they're vibrating at electrical frequencies. So therefore, that may be, in fact it is, that is the reason they are beneficial to the human race. All remedies vibrate at frequencies and we need these frequencies. That is our if you like, our medical route. So we need to take in electrical frequencies. And we can be uh, unbalanced, um, if in a way dysfunctional, if we don't take in these, this light of the sun's rays, because it's feed to us. You look at a, um, you watch a plant. A plant will open its leaves to um, basically to take in sunlight. That's the, that's the only reason the plant is opening its leaves. Uh, so you say again, what is it in sunlight that a plant wants? And it's it's frequencies, it's electrical frequencies. So if the plant is a honica, the plant is fed by electrical frequencies. A, a cabbage is fed by electrical frequencies of the sun's rays. So, and um, the term is assimilate. Um, it's basically digesting at a cellular level. So the, the cabbage will assimilate cosmic light and convert that to a, a type of energy. Energy being a loose term. And uh, so now we know that um, if we're eating cabbage, we're eating assimilated, we're eating processed sunlight. So everything seems to be wrapped around this principle of the importance and the, rele the relevance of sunlight. In fact, the proof of this, if you take the sun away now, every all life has gone immediately. So everything is about sunlight, the rays of the sun. And it's not about warmth of the sun, it's about the vibrational frequencies, electrical, everything. We are electrical beings again. Um, any questions? Where do I start? So um, let's give people watching this an idea of how all that applies. So we spoke a couple of days ago 
and we decided that I needed a remedy. How did you go about finding out what remedy I needed? Well, the way I view it is, is your remedies basically come from the sun's rays. And the sun's rays are made up of vibrational frequencies. So if you need a remedy, it will be because your body's down. You're not, you're not functioning. You're not taking in the sun's rays as you have uh, evolved to or you've been designed to, whatever route you take. Um, now, so you would show, um, because your body's now out of order, dysfunctional, you will show signs that your body's not right. But you'll also show signs, or you need to accept, I think, that um, your body's not right, maybe because you're not taking in the, the seven rays of the sun's, in fact, there are nine. There's two invisible rays as well, which are um, uh, ultraviolet and infrared. But they're also part of the sun's rays system. Now, so we know your body, we know your body's out of balance, and we look for the signs that your body's out of balance. And the way I view it now is you're out of balance because you're not assimilating those the the energy of the sun's rays and therefore you're not assimilating in the form of of color vibrations because the sun's rays are all about color vibration so i told you a couple of symptoms and what yeah. did you do with those symptoms to come up with a remedy well what i do is i i i i very much accept the principle of dowsing uh, it's, it's an ancient system and I use a pendulum and I take the uh, a person's sample, in your case, your hair, because your hair contains your DNA. So and your your body, your hair is electrical. OK, and it's vibrating at frequencies. So I've got you in my hand trapped in a piece of two pieces of sticky paper. But it's it, it is it is your actual physical body. The, the electrical body that's that's in the hair so that elect that electrical um the electrical particles you can use if you hold them and uh, and a pendulum at the same time you can you can if you like you can place the pendulum towards the seven gems which are in an arc okay different colors the the spectrum colors yes yeah because the seven gems represent so a ruby would represent the red part of the spectrum. Yeah. Vibrations, uh, vibrationally. And uh, going through that, uh, according to Ayurveda, Ayurvedic medicine, orange uh, would be um, uh, taken in by, uh, by um, pearl, or pearl vibrates at an orange frequency, and uh, red coral vibrates at a yellow frequency, I just take their word for it. You know, they're, they're wiser people than me. And going through that list, um, the next one would be um, green. Green emerald vibrates at a green frequency. Uh, moonstone they use um, to represent the blue uh, frequency, part of the spectrum. Um, diamond vibrates at an indigo frequency. And we're left with, um, with sapphire which vibrates at a violet frequency. So you've got all those gems, the seven gems, and they're vibrating. Everything, remember, everything vibrates. Nothing is static. So all these gems are vibrating at frequencies. So if I hold your sample in my hand with a pendulum, you'll be attracted to whatever you are, uh, let's say, need electromagnetically. It's magnetism. You are magnetized, your body's magnetized to what it needs. And in your case, I forget the color now. At, uh, the coral red, which was the coral. yellow frequency. So you were attracted, you were you're using a pendulum, your hair sample was attracted to red coral, which means you're not taking in, let's say, effectively or efficiently the yellow part of the sun's rays. Whatever the term may be, effectively yeah. or efficiently. Now, so therefore, 
you're now out of balance. Yeah. So we now need to give you um, the yellow part into your body. And um, in this case, uh, uh, I take your symptoms and I use my own experience to, yeah. uh, to decide which is the most yellow, the, the remedy that's most pertaining to your, to your problem. So when you, once you've ascertained a colour, you've mentioned the other day that certain remedies you see as being one of the seven or nine colours. How did you work that out? Is there a system for that? Well, I've created a list, again, using uh, dowsing as the, uh, the most effective route. So if I, for example, if I hold a bottle of arnica in my hand, bear in mind that arnica is a substance and therefore uh, vibrates at a frequency and everything is coloured. Everything that we can see is coloured. What so frequency does arnica vibrate? What colour does arnica vibrate at? Well, well, the way we find out is simply <laughs> I have those gems in front of me and we'll see what arnica is attracted to yeah. electromagnetically. Again, magnetism. Yeah. And, and the arnica is always attracted to, to uh, red coral. Oh, to red, yeah. Mm. Which proves that arnica vibrates at a yellow frequency. Yeah. So I now know that one of your remedies could be arnica. Yeah, absolutely. I also know that one of your remedies could be called carb. Yeah. Which also vibrates at the yellow frequency. Yeah. So we're looking for we're looking for this frequency range. Yeah. And, and linking that in with the with the colours. So with dowsing or via dowsing, I could build up a whole list of um, the relative colours to the remedies, which I have done. Once you've got your, let's just say we're doing coral yellow, coral red, which vibrates at the yellow. And yeah. say you've frequency. Been through frequency, and say you've been through the whole of the um, uh, all all of our pharmacopoeia, and you've divided the remedies into each color. How do you then? You you said it was with the knowledge of your remedies, but say you've got um, a thousand remedies, say in the yellow frequency. How do you then narrow that down using by by uh, choosing very important and most relative symptoms. So would you use your books anymore? Yes. You, oh, Absolutely. you would? Yeah. yeah, so you'd go I'll back. Give you, to... I'll give you a case of, of epilepsy. Danny, who you met earlier, um, yeah. he was attracted to yellow. And uh, so I found this, the, the colour route can be a shortcut. I mean, normally, if I'm treating an, an epilepsy case, which I normally don't, uh, I always, my term is I always I always try to help anyone. I never say I will cure anything, never, because I don't believe, I certainly, uh, I think the person always does the curing. Yeah. Never, never the medicine. Yeah. So, so I need to find out what, um, what Danny's relevant symptoms are. And you, you normally see, you go to, in the books, you go to epilepsy. Well, there could be, and I know he's attracted to yellow. There could, there could have been 50, 50 yellow remedies there. So I want, to, I want a more accurate route, uh, a, a more a pertinent route. So I then, um, I ask further questions. And he mentions, a, a, he mentioned a sensation that's felt, you know, when he gets this, when he has this, attack yeah he feels a sensation in his legs and i found that in the that's what you call a rubric yeah it's a it's a symptom so you open the you open the book for symptoms and and i found in sensation felt in legs i found that there automatically cal carb is staring me in the face big capital letters so yeah. the, it's obviously the remedy I'm going to go for because I know the calcarb vibrates at the yellow frequency. Yeah. Okay. But to cut the story short, I'm going to give him yellow in the form of a calcarb. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, uh, I can assure you that before the owl was gone, it was cured. Amazing. And that was epilepsy. Yeah. He never had, I'll, I'll forget the word cure. Yeah. He, never had another, he never had another attack. So how long ago was that? Oh, that's about 10 years ago. <laughs> 10 years ago, and he's been fine since. Absolutely. That's incredible. That's incredible. Now, I, I will give you another example. Because I now know the colour is every time he has a problem, he 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 resonates with the the yellow frequency. Yeah. I was in Jersey. I, I, look, this is going to be a bit unbelievable. Okay, I was in Jersey. I was treating uh, babies in Jersey, and, and plus doing other things. And um, the uh, I had a phone call. His mum, my sister, gave me uh, gave Danny my phone number in Jersey, and I okayed that, just in case there was a problem. Um, so, obviously, Danny's very dear to me. And uh, I said, what's the problem? He rung. Uh, what's the problem, Danny? He says, I'm stuck, Uncle John. He says, uh, I can't move. He'd, uh, he was bedridden with flu. Oh, no. In fact, he couldn't even pick the phone up. His sister, who lived near to him, I had to pop around the house to pick the phone up for him, to phone oh. me. Anyway, so I knew he was going to be uh, attracted to... Um, yeah, excuse me a second. I knew Danny was attracted to um, to yellow. So again, I said to Danny, I said, look, I can't get remedies to you. I'm in Jersey. I said... Try and take take the remedy, the the the, the calc carb that helped you with your um, epilepsy. Epilepsy, and uh, and it was ten m again. By the way, I went through two potencies to get to Danny's first successful um, uh, sure. remedy uh, because I had to, I gave him to calc carb two hundred and then ten m. Yeah. But in this case, I said, look, Danny, take calc carb ten m. No, bear in mind, Danny's in the UK and I'm in Jersey. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, um, bedridden flu, by the way. Yeah. Now, I've, I've got the message somewhere. He was out of the house, certainly in a couple of hours' time. Out of the house. Amazing. All done. That is the value of seeing, of accepting the value of the sun's rays. Yeah. So let's just give people some background. So you've been a homeopath for how long? Um, well, it, it, are you talking about qualified? Because I was treating people the, the very week I heard about the the word homeopathy. All right, well, do tell us. I want to know. 40 years. Amazing. And how long have you been qualified from college? Um. If I could remember properly, I'll tell you. Okay, long time. I, it's a long time. It's, it's it's at least ten years. I had a I had an accident with hydrofluoric acid, and it uh, it made mess of uh, my memory state. So a lot of things I can forget now because I was I was mistreated by the um the system. Okay, I understand. So um, so you mentioned the other day that you have a lot of experience working with the homeopathic pharmacies. How did that come about? Well, when uh, everything stems back to me from uh, Bonnie, uh, he was a Bonnie boy. Bonnie was a, was a bearded collie. Um, if you just have a look at the sandy bearded collie, you'll see more or less a facsimile of Bonnie. And uh, he was he was ill, and um, we took him to the vet. I'd not even heard of homeopathy. In, uh, and the vet gave him typically painkillers. So I think brilliantly, you know, Bonnie was now as right as rain. It could run about. But the following day, he was down again. And uh, I called the vet back. And she said, look, she says, um, by the way, at that time, I was interested in herbal medicine. In fact, I was known in the area for uh, treating lots of situations with herbs. I was a herbal nut. And um, 
And uh, the vet said, look, there's nothing we can do. She says he's what we call a dyer. Uh, he's got a problem and he's not, he's not going to get better. He will die in a short while. Yeah. I said, look, what about um, what about herbs? I said, I know quite a bit about herbs. She said, John, try anything. She said, I'll tell you what, a friend of mine is interested in homeopathy. Okay. She said, I'll talk to her about it. Ring me back. So we rung back, uh, my ex-wife were rung back on the Friday. And um, and she said, uh, yeah, she says, I've had a word with this. She says, give Arnica. Well, the quest for Arnica took me to, eventually, to Ainsworth's, you know. And that's where I, um, Arnica saved his life, by the way. Oh, that's amazing. And um, he lived another, something like at least seven years. I love that story. I I couldn't, I'm one of those people that couldn't sit and just let this happen. You know, I wanted to know why. I wanted to know why it worked. I wanted to know why the vet didn't give Arnica. I wanted to know why everything. I'm a, I'm a why person. Yeah. And so um, this quest for Arnica took me to um, one to Ainsworth and to other eminent people in medicine and eventually um you see everything happened rather quickly for me uh i now i now needed to um i realized that that you could get people better quickly by using even even kids with teething you know i don't think there's any child at all that can cannot be put out of misery with one or two remedies for teething all, all through the history of man, you know, you, you know this must disturb me. Yeah. So, um, so I was using remedies, and then, um, and then uh, that's it. Basically, I was treating people, and uh, go on. No, I was just listening. I was didn't have a question ready. Yeah, the um, so I keep I keep forgetting my lines a little bit because this is the problem with acid burns, hydrofluoric acid. I was a stained glass artist, you see, at the time, and um, so I got this uh, this journey about um, trying to find out why everything worked. Now at that time, I'd never even heard of the word homeopathy, but when I quickly realised uh, I was onto something really, really big. Uh, I needed to find out where I could meet people. It was costing 20 pence a phone call, 20 pence a minute on the phone. It's costing a fortune just to talk to anybody about homeopathy. Yeah. And I did meet some good people. And um, But I wanted to know more about it. And someone told me there was a, there was a local group. And so uh, I tracked down, I was given the address, and uh, I went to this one of the towns in in Stoke on Trent, and I um, <clears throat> excuse me, I uh, knocked on this door, and um, I said hello, uh, I'm John, and I, I said uh, I I understand that you're a, you're on a homeopathic group. She says, well, to tell you the truth, John, she says it's it's a bit um, it's not really operational now. Anyway. I never went in the house, by the way. I stood at the door. And she bought a box with a list of cards. And so all within 10 minutes, I was chairman of the homeopathic group. <laughs> That's how it all happened. Oh, I fun. walked away from that house as chairman. And um, then it, 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 it sort of escalated very quickly. You know, I, I got other people involved. I contacted all the names uh, in the cards. Um, in the within the group, and so I dedicated my life to promoting homeopathy. Awesome. So, what is your plan for sharing or developing or with the your cosmic homeopathy? What's the plan? Well, this is so important um, that you can get to remedy so quickly by detecting the um, the color first. The, uh, the cosmic light that you're short of. 
Um, it's such a shortcut. So I'm really going to tell everybody, I will teach anybody. How do I people will... get in touch with you? Uh, well, there's a website called uh, www.cosmichomeopathy.com. Yeah. There's um there's a John Twig homeopath at airpost.net. At airpost. Yeah. A I R post. A I R P O S T dot net. Right. Have we got a typing facility? There is a messenger thingy on the side. Actually, I don't know if that bit records. So I can. Do you want okay. to? That's airpost. What was it, John at airpost.net? Um, where can I type? So if you go along to the bottom, they should say chat. Chat, 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 yeah. Um, and then you type it in there and it should come up on the right. Otherwise, okay. we can just put those details in um, a link with this video. Well, I'll put this here for your benefit. Okay, doke. Um, so... Um, do we, do we, do we, do we, do we, press return and it should show there it is cosmic homeopathy right. oh, great and, and so um, people can contact you at cosmic homeopathy no best use my website my uh, email email and are you taking patients and or are you taking students? I'm, what is it you're looking for? I've never stopped. <laughs> Brilliant. So it's look, look, I'm 78 now, so I've never stopped and I'm not going to stop ever. Great. Great. Okay, so um, is there anything else you want to add to that in the last minute or so? Well, there's a, it seems that... Um, it seems that the solutions can come rather easily. Only yesterday, somebody phoned me with a problem. Uh, you, you're giving yourself an example. Yeah. There's a, a Lee, a member of the group. She phoned me this morning, and she's in. A, uh, I don't want to really go into the mess that she's been in because she lost her son, and uh, but the extremes of grief that her body's gone through, and yeah. she was she wasn't feeling good today. And I uh, just I went straight to her hair sample. Yeah. And realized she was attracted to indigo. Yeah. Diamonds. Yeah. And therefore, with my knowledge of remedies, I realized that uh, the likelihood she she just wants some more nitromyo. Okay. And uh, she's put an answer on the um, on the group today. Uh, the problem was solved within minutes. Amazing. I mean, I felt better immediately the other day when I took the remedy you prescribed. So thank yeah. you. But please, please bear in mind, you're not taking remedies. You're taking frequencies. Frequencies, taking yeah. Vibrations. Frequencies and vibrations. Okay, so let's leave that there today. This is just an introduction video. And yeah. um, we can answer questions and do more videos in the future for people. So thank you very much for your time. And I hope that the people watching this have enjoyed it. Pleasure. Thank you. Up yeah. next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.